Preserving occupational health through effective engineering controls and training. This is Clayton Associates. In 1983, Clayton Associates revolutionized the way auto and truck mechanics work on brakes and clutches. They no longer have to breathe hazardous dust. Over the years, our product line has steadily grown in both size and scope. Our strength is innovation, guided by a single-minded pursuit of the ideal that people can work safely and still be productive. The result has been customer satisfaction in products that work and are put to work. Back when we began, the focus was on preventing asbestos disease in auto and truck mechanics. Moving through the 90s, asbestos is still a concern, although its use in friction products has been steadily declining. More and more, man-made fibers are replacing asbestos in brake and clutch pads. But experts tell us that many of these non-asbestos fibers are toxic to lab animals and will probably be hazardous to man. With this in mind, manufacturers are labeling their products to warn customers to avoid breathing the dust. It's an opinion shared by many that it doesn't matter what brakes and clutches are made of, breathing this dust can cause serious health problems for mechanics. The next 16 minutes will be devoted to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency's video, Don't Blow It. We encourage you to take the time to view it. EPA is a strong advocate of the need to protect mechanics from brake and clutch dust. The video discusses the many diseases which can develop in mechanics from breathing this dust and offers suggestions as to what to look for when purchasing equipment for your shop. Yeah, it's a pretty big operation now. Six bays, ten mechanics. About 30 cars come through here a day. But it's taken a long time to build it up. When I first started out pumping gas, all I had was a little hoist on the side. Back then, we were doing mostly oil changes. Maybe we'd do a tune-up. Every so often, we'd even do a brake job. But then about, oh, I guess it was five years ago, we moved here. I bought out the old owner and, well, held my breath. But it's all working out fine. We do a lot more things here now. We do tune-ups, engine work, brake jobs. Some of them, like replacing a muffler, haven't really changed much over the years. But others, like doing brake jobs, have really changed a lot. Brake jobs are pretty high-tech now. But just a few years ago, we did them real simple. Just take a look at these snapshots from the old shop. We did a lot of things wrong back then, and this was probably the worst of them. Now, the first thing I tell every one of my mechanics is, don't blow it. Don't blow it is right, because that dust can be deadly. Using an air hose like this is now illegal. You see, most brake linings contain asbestos. Asbestos is a durable, high-friction, fibrous material that makes it useful for brake materials and a lot of other applications. But it's precisely this indestructible quality that makes it so dangerous. For when it gets ground into a fine dust by repeated friction in braking, or when a mechanic grinds down brake linings, it can easily be breathed in, and that's when it can do its damage. Millions of dust particles can be released during brake and clutch servicing, and the largest of the visible clumps aren't the real problem. It's the microscopic, invisible fibers that enter the lungs, which can do the most damage. Inhaling these asbestos fibers can cause cancer, lung cancer, and a fatal cancer of the lining of the lungs or abdomen called mesothelioma. Even breathing in these asbestos fibers for short periods of time may cause cancer and symptoms of these cancers take many years to develop. 15 years, sometimes 20 or 30 years or more. You can't tell that you're breathing it in 
and there's usually nothing to indicate it's hurting you at first. And it may harm you, even if you're doing a short job or two, even after you have stopped working with it. Asbestos fibers can also cause the lungs to form scar tissue. This scar tissue isn't elastic like the lungs are. Too much asbestos, too much scar tissue, and it gets harder and harder to breathe. This scarring is called asbestosis. Unfortunately, the scar tissue doesn't turn back into good lung tissue, so the disease doesn't get better once it develops. The more asbestos you breathe, the greater your chances of developing this scarring. So the time to control asbestos is now, when you first start working with brakes, when you're feeling fine. And even if you've been exposed to asbestos, you can still take steps to protect yourself. Some of the things we used to do in the old days were totally useless. In fact, downright dangerous. Wiping with a rag or brush doesn't effectively control dust, no matter how carefully done. Even wetting these tools doesn't work. They eventually dry out, and then when you handle it or shake it, the asbestos is spread around the garage. Using a liquid squirt bottle or a garden hose or a solvent spray actually spreads the asbestos, and when the liquid dries, the asbestos is still all over the garage. Vacuuming up with regular shop vacuums doesn't do any good. They don't have filter bags that can trap the really small fibers, the most dangerous ones. They can actually spread the asbestos around the garage as much as the compressed air hose. Remember, these small fibers are the ones you want to avoid. We do a few other things around here just to be safe. We keep the lunch area separate from the work area and I never let any of my mechanics eat or drink anything while they're doing a brake job. And we always wash our hands carefully before we eat. Look, nobody wants to swallow any of that stray asbestos. We keep our street clothes separate from our work clothes, and our work clothes are specially laundered. Now, this may seem like a small thing to you, but a magazine article I read recently said that some scientists found that wives and children of men who work with asbestos were getting cancer. And they got the cancer from the dust that the men were bringing home on their work clothes. Now, we keep our asbestos levels really low here. But the last thing that I want to worry about is my wife and my kids and my mechanics, wives and kids being in danger. So the few extra bucks in laundry bills are worth it. One more thing. I don't allow any of my mechanics to smoke while they're doing a brake job. And if they do smoke, I strongly encourage them to stop. I used to smoke. Oh, and I knew all the arguments against it. But the one thing that convinced me to stop smoking is this chart over here. Now, we all know how dangerous smoking is. And I hope by now you know about asbestos, too. But there's one thing that's more dangerous than either of these. And that's their combination. Here, take a look at this. This is the risk of getting lung cancer if you don't smoke. And we all know that smokers get a lot more lung cancer. And so do some asbestos workers. But look at this. If you smoke and you're exposed to asbestos, your risk is five times worse than if you only smoke. And it's ten times worse than if you're only exposed to asbestos. Not only that, but it's 50 times worse than if you don't smoke and you're not exposed to asbestos. Like I said, this chart convinced me to stop smoking. And it even convinced some of my mechanics, too. The way I figure it, I either quit smoking or I quit this business. In the past, some garages have used dust masks or respirators during brake work. But respirators, which use filters to remove asbestos from the air as you breathe it, are not as effective as those which supply clean, pressurized air, like underwater scuba-type equipment. And using such equipment properly requires a whole separate program, including special training, medical evaluations, maintenance. And even the best respirator will not help others in and around the garage, like customers, supervisors, and other mechanics who are not wearing them. And if you wear them but still spread brake dust around the garage, 
you'll still be exposed when you take the thing off. So the best approach is to collect and control brake dust and prevent its release into the garage. Remember, asbestos is dangerous stuff. How dangerous? Well, the federal government is proposing to phase out its use entirely. Anyone who works with asbestos, especially if they don't use the right equipment and the right procedures, is at risk. And the fact that you can't tell when you breathe it in and it doesn't make you feel bad makes it even worse because you're not aware of the danger. But it's there. And it can catch up with you. Years after you leave a particular garage and even years after you stop being a mechanic. I don't only own this garage. I work here. I want to treat my people right and I want to protect myself. What you've heard today could save your life. Make sure that the garage that you work at has the right equipment and the right procedures. You know what I mean. Don't blow it. It's our belief that auto and truck mechanics simply don't want to breathe this dust anymore, whether it contains asbestos or not. But there's a limit to how much nuisance they'll put up with to do it. What's needed is an easy-to-use brake and clutch cleaning system which is safe for the technician. It must enable him to loosen and remove drums without disturbing the dust or making it airborne, and to thoroughly clean the brakes and remove hazardous dust before he begins to inspect or repair them. It has to be low in cost and affordable to all shops anywhere in the world. That means it must have a low purchase price and it must be cost effective to operate on a daily basis. Finally, it must be environmentally safe. Today, environmental awareness is growing. We all know that we can't solve one problem, an occupational health problem, and in the process, create another problem for the environment. We at Clayton are proud to bring you the world-class solution to this occupational health problem, the brake washer. It's fast, safe, and affordable. It's ideally suited to the commercial repair shop where time is of the essence and technicians are impatient and unwilling to tolerate any nuisance when it comes to getting the job done. The brake washer is always ready to use. There's no setup or preparation time, and it fits vehicles of all sizes. It keeps brake dust out of the shop, and best of all, it keeps it out of everyone's lungs. The brake washer uses a water-based, biodegradable alkaline cleaner. It's not hazardous to workers, it's not harmful to the environment, and it's safe to use on all brakes. However, not every manufacturer can make this claim. Let's see what one manufacturer writes about his product. We have recently been informed that some customers may be using parts cleaning units to clean friction materials, including brake pads, brake shoes, and clutches, during routine inspections and in instances when those friction materials continue to be used. The parts cleaners should not be used in this manner. Parts cleaning solvents should only come in contact with friction materials in instances when those materials will be replaced. In other words, it's useless during brake inspections. One of the world's largest chains of auto repair shops, responsible for over one million brake jobs every year, reports that their shops will perform an average of five brake inspections for every repair job. If this is any indication of the activity found in other brake service shops, it means that 80% of the time, 
Technicians using parts cleaning solvent have no means to control brake dust. The brake washer eliminates this health hazard for mechanics all the time. Regarding liquid spray systems, in its publication, Guidance for Preventing Asbestos Disease Among Auto Mechanics, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency reports, measurements from one manufacturer using a liquid spray system show that over a million fibers of asbestos can be released near a mechanic's face. Pressurized sprayers and aerosol cans discharge the liquid with such force that it can disturb the dust and make it airborne. The same can happen with systems in which compressed air is used to siphon the liquid. Under the best of conditions, a lot of air accompanies the liquid during spraying. Unfortunately for the mechanic, it often happens that so much air and so little liquid is sprayed that it blows dust all over the place. You simply can't blow it with the brake washer. A compressed air-driven pump motor delivers cleaning solution to the tools. Air never comes in contact with the solution, and it never ever comes in contact with brake dust. The compressed air-driven pump offers another important benefit. It requires no electricity. There's no extension cord to worry about, and there's no chance of electrical shock. After removing the tire, you simply disconnect the compressed air supply line, attach it to the brake washer, and you're ready to clean the brakes. Let's take a look at the tools on the brake washer. The injector nozzle is used to saturate the brakes with solution before drum removal. Some drums and backing plates have adjustment slots. Solution is injected into the slot while the drum is rotated, distributing the cleaner throughout the brakes. If there's no slot available, the solution is injected between the backing plate and drum, gently flooding and saturating the brakes and drum. The second tool is the flow-through brush. It's ergonomically designed to place the brush at a comfortable angle for good scrubbing action. The trigger regulates the flow of solution, which continuously flows through the brush to thoroughly clean the brakes. The optional clutch cleaning tool has a special tip for spraying a fine mist of cleaning solution into the clutch housing. The penetrating mist saturates the interior of the clutch housing before the technician begins to work on it. The clutch tool prevents any exposure to harmful dust found in the pressure plate and clutch housing. The brake washer is easy to use when servicing vehicles on alignment lifts or safety stands. Simply remove the cover and place it under the brakes. When you're finished cleaning, the solution is poured back into the washer. Incidentally, when the cover is not in use, it's stored on the brake washer where it's always handy. The brake washer is easy on your budget. One quart of concentrated cleaner is all it takes to make 10 gallons of solution to fill the tank. Most shops can expect to change the solution every few weeks. This great little machine requires virtually no maintenance and costs only pennies a day to operate. Mechanics tell us that the brake washer is easy to move around the shop too. The wide base eliminates any worry that the washer may tip over, a frequent complaint heard about other brake cleaners. The components are welded, making a rugged, durable machine. It has four four-inch diameter casters, which easily roll over rough floors. The casters are one and a quarter inch thick, so they won't get caught in the floor grates. We've saved the best for last. Our carefree disposal system. The environmentally safe, no hassle, no worry, waste disposal system. The microfilter removes decomposed brake linings, rust, and dirt down to 15 microns in size, about one fifth of the diameter of a human hair. The microfilter is suspended in the solution, so it's always wet due to wicking action of the filter. There's no opportunity for brake particles to dry and become airborne. For disposal, 
place the wet filter into a self-sealing bag and seal it. We had an independent laboratory analyze two full months of accumulated waste from brake cleaning. The analysis proved that asbestos content was far below the 1% limit for classifying it as asbestos waste. Thus, waste from the brake washer is nothing more than ordinary shop waste. One shop, which had been using another washer for over a year, made us aware that brake fluid and oil will be washed into the tank. They told us that in no time at all, the cleaning solution would begin leaving an oily film on the brakes. One of their mechanics told us how he had to drive a customer's car for miles to burn off the oil residue left on the brakes after cleaning. Accordingly, they had to change the cleaning solution frequently, which was both annoying and costly. Oil is no problem for the brake washer. Our exclusive oil magnet absorbs the oil, leaving the solution oil-free and biodegradable. When full, the oil magnet can be wrung out into the shop waste oil container and then be returned to the brake washer. The oil-free solution is simply poured down the drain. An optional 5 micron filter is available. It too can be disposed of with the microfilter. Mechanics who've used the brake washer are crazy about it. I overheard one mechanic exclaim, Finally, a brake cleaner that works. I'm proud to tell you that not only does it work, it's put to work by men and women who applaud its simplicity and ease of use. If you're a shop owner or manager, you'll also appreciate the brake washer's affordable purchase price and low operating cost. On behalf of all of us at Clayton, I thank you for choosing the brake washer to protect you and your coworkers. And if you haven't purchased one yet, I look forward to being able to serve you in the near future.